best uh, best advice I was ever given was to go to JBLM because I had a great support group. I ended up having uh, two company commanders who were former regiment guys. I had a first sergeant who was a regiment guy. My battalion commander was a regiment guy. My brigade commander was a regiment guy. And they really uh, started getting me excited about the range regiment. And up in that point, I didn't really have an appreciation or under, because, you know, the range regiments are such quiet professionals uh, that it wasn't until I got to hang around rangers that I really uh, found out that it was something that I wanted to do. So I went to JBLM and I'm really lucky that I did uh, because of Colonel uh, Chung and because of the rangers I got to hang around with. How long was it before you got a chance to put in your packet? So timelines are always different, uh, and my timeline was a little screwed. I had to put in my packet really soon. It was almost, uh, I think it was like two or three months after I got to my uh, first duty station. And it was just because of how it worked out with my eye bullet class was one of the later eye bullet classes in the year. And that was because I left the Milwaukee Bucks when I did, and so on mm. and so forth. So uh, that, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, people ask me, you know, junior officers, uh, hey, when should I put my packet in? And I'll just tell them, don't, don't do what I did. Uh, you know, go explore. I, I would love for you to have a lot of time at your first duty station because that's where you learn a lot and you show up more prepared to help the Ranger Regiment. Uh, and I, I had a great experience at my first duty station, but between COVID shutting everything down for a while and we were working very dispersed and isolated, uh, in my accelerated timeline, it was it was a pretty quick transition uh, to having to put in that packet for Ranger Regiment. Yeah, so how was that transition then into the regiment? Uh, it was great, again, humbling. But at, at this point, uh, I think we all agree on this, like those humbling environments are the ones you want to be in. You know, the rooms where you're not the smartest person in the room, you should fight to get in that room because yeah. those are the, the teams that are going to humble you, they're going to challenge you to bring your best. And it was also humbling with my peers uh, in the sense that, Hey, uh, what, what what did you do before you got here? Oh, well, I was a platoon leader for a year. I was an XO for a year, and I did a scout PL time for this amount of time. And for me, mine was much more accelerated. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like I had people in the Ranger Regiment that had assessed me through RAS2, and they were getting to know me, and they weren't going to set me up for failure. They put me in positions to where I could use my strengths, and I could still get caught up and learn they really develop you. Uh, they, there is expectation that you show up with the right attitude and you have the physical fitness. Uh, but I was kind of taken back with how much time goes into these LPDs and they're, them trying to bring uh, junior leaders along. Uh, so I was anxious to your point. I had reservations. Hey, am I going to show up ready to contribute? And, and in some ways, I wasn't uh, ready to contribute at the level I'm contributing now, but they, they got me to where I am now. So. Yeah, that's, that's a great compliment, once again, but from an officer's perspective of just how the regiment takes their leaders and really utilizes them in the best way. And I'm not trying to do a plug necessarily yeah. just for regiment, but you guys do a great job of once you get the people who are qualified in there, how to, how to you know, lean on their strengths. <clears throat> you know, uh, they, they, the regiment does do a, a much better job now of getting the right people in the jobs, and we do, um, we do a lot of... Uh, uh, talent working groups and stuff and, and senior meetings to, to decide make those decisions so uh, it's, it's a lot a lot more goes into it uh, who's going in those positions and who's going to be with this different person uh, as a ranger buddy you know PO platoon sergeant first sergeant commander it's like an uh, NBA draft you're kind of looking at the really board is. and uh, trying to decide well, uh, yeah. like we you know at my, at my level of sergeant major like we had we got to decide like these are the guys that are coming up and going to be able to take these platoons you know who would he, who would he want to take and you know we, we literally sit down there for a couple of hours and we do we hash it out and we're like you know sergeant major has to send out that hey buddy you didn't make the cut type stuff yeah um, since Marshall got here, I, you know, uh, obviously everybody saw him, <laughs> but uh, the, he he's literally stepped up since day one. You know, he's like, I wonder if I'm going to be the you know guy. But I remember like the first him like he's literally walking at, out. And I think I was telling you this one, Dave. Like he literally never done this before in his life and briefed in front of all these people that have all these different amazing talents to do with on on VTCs with. Um, you know, the other amount of people that have way better talents than I'll ever even think of, but with the most up, utmost confidence and in, in walked out on the floor and, you know, he's pointing at shit that he probably literally just learned what it was. <laughs> 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 like, you know what I mean? Like the, to the point where he's probably in the bathroom going, okay, and this is that, and, you know, like 
it, and it literally sounded like you'd been sitting there doing it for the last 15 years. Like, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have that way of caring about yourself. And again, uh, the way you carry yourself um, probably is because of where, how you came through everything and who touched your lives along the way. But um, you also have that voice and the way you carry yourself. I could totally hear yourself in an NBA game doing a sports cast um, as well type of thing. And, <laughs> Great stereo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you just have that confidence about you. And, well, it's um, a humble confidence. It too, is. Right? So it's a, it, yeah. With somebody come, call, come off really confident, like they can almost come off like cocky. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you, have, you, don't, you don't have any of that. Like you go with a smile. And, and I've, I mean, I've interrupted you talking. And I've come and talked to you. And, and I'll be like, hey, buddy. Like, and, and you're just like, oh, yeah, Roger. Right, right. Like very humble. Take whatever you got to give him and like put it in his playbook, if you will, and, and execute, you know, with, with the utmost humility. And it makes you want to be better. You're like, I, I might have been pissed off about that. <laughs> you know? but, uh, he's well, amazing. Was it challenging for you because you didn't get that time within conventional uh, enough time that some typically do? Or did you feel like you got enough time in the conventional to get you prepared? I, I feel like I did get enough time. Yeah. And my, my leaders uh, at, you know, between Colonel Chung and the leaders I had at, out at uh, JBLM, they, they prepared me in, in so many ways. But no matter, I could have been there for 10 years preparing and I still would have gotten to regiment i feel like i wasn't prepared enough uh, yeah. so I, I just i don't know if i was ever going to be able to beat that feeling of you want to give them the, them your best but you always feel like you can get better uh so no I, i'm really grateful with everything especially covid we we did some really creative things to navigate training during that time in a safe way and i got to be a part of some cool opportunities out there i uh, loved my second id experience it, it did prepare me very well but it's probably a personal thing at the end of it i'm like man i I just I want to give Ranger Regiment the world. I wish I was coming to them a 30-year military veteran with a lot more experience, but they got what they got, and uh, they've been able to make do with it, and so I'm grateful that uh, they put up with me. Yeah, so General Brown, where is he feel like fitting in with all of this uh, through this, this stage? Yeah, well, just uh, instrumental and helpful uh, throughout. Uh, by the time I got to Regiment, I think at that point he was retiring. Okay. But... Uh, I don't know if it's serendipity or, or what, but at that point, I also start crossing paths with more and more people who General Brown has his fingerprints all over, people that he's mentored. I know we'd mentioned Colonel Shaw with RSTB, um, and it, it's just, uh, he, he's the kind of leader and the kind of character where, and he keeps the kind of company where the, there isn't a more powerful icebreaker in certain rooms than saying like, oh, hey, I'm, you know, I'm friends with General Brown. That's, that's all we need to know about you. Uh, we know the kind of friends that he keeps. Uh, so that it's, it's a powerful thing. So I, I haven't gotten to see him as much in person. He's still doing great things now. Re- retired outside the military, he's doing well. Um, but his, uh, he planted a bunch of trees he'll never get to see grow. You know, there, there are all these leaders going on to do great things that kind of bear his name in some way. Yeah, so what would you say would be some of the things if you're – you know, if you're looking back and you're trying to give some advice to some of those guys that are coming up, what are what are the some of the things that you've learned along the way? And obviously, you've had some great coaches and mentors that you've already passed on some great nuggets within the show. But if you wanted to pull somebody up, what what kind of advice would you give them? Yeah, your your timing's good because they uh, my my mortar platoon. We were running a mortar range for i bullock uh students so i was in their shoes just a couple years ago yeah and s- same question what do you wish you, you knew and uh, uh something i i told them was uh i think that's come through this i said hey i i wish as much as i did i wish i would have taken another spoonful of humble pie you know from the very beginning because as soon as you come in here thinking that you know everything um uh, that that's that much less that you get the chance to learn also, you're in a very unique environment in iBulk. You've got cadre. Their only job and their, their metric is making you better. Uh, you're not going to be in a whole lot of environments like that in your life. You're going to be in environments where the guy on your left wants the job more than you and almost hopes that you do poorly. Uh, this is a special time where so th- this is like a melting pot of talent and mentoring and, and just uh, take it all in. Uh, and you got to do that with a humble approach. Uh, two, I told the young officers... 
and I'll say it here on the podcast in case there are any young officers listening. Uh, I wish I had more of an appreciation for mortars. <laughs> <laughs> Paul would love you right now. Paul, yeah, we're yeah, here co-hosting. Here right <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, mortars are, to me, uh, the way I describe them and the reason I really like them is I was kind of a, a dirty work basketball player. I didn't care as much about the kind of points that I got, but some of the things that don't show up in the stat book, uh, setting screens, uh, setting someone else up for success, and mortars do that in a really powerful way. They're almost like the uh, the Dennis Rodman of uh, of the military. You know, you don't win without yes. them. <laughs> yes, Paul. I'm so glad you used Dennis Rodman <laughs> as that description. Yeah, Paul, that was for you. Uh, Paul, that's that's definitely for you. Yeah, also, they they can sometimes be just as crazy as Dennis Rodman. That's right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, why yeah. I, if you ever you see Paul, you know. That's why I was so happy you said Dennis Rodman. Yeah. So uh, it was speaking to an audience of officers. I had to let them know that uh you know hey take another scoop of humble pie uh love love your mortars and uh yeah th those are the the big things i tried to leave them with yeah what about uh anything as far as like your ncos or uh didn't yeah so with that i i do like the analogy of uh with basketball right like uh the nba 450 players and uh, misconceptions people think hey these are the 450 best players in the world I'll tell you, if you go on, go and get the 451st person who didn't quite make it in the NBA, he's really good. <laughs> he's really good. He, he belongs in there every bit as much, but a lot of it's timing, a lot of it's opportunity. So really, if I had to break it down, and this isn't official, don't quote me, but the way I interpret it is the top 100 <laughs> players, they are the top 100, and they, are, they have next level talent and ability. But the bottom 350, they're interchangeable with the, the next 1,000 probably in the world. And it's a lot of its timing, a lot of its opportunity. Uh, and it's who are the top 100 going to want to play with? Who are they going to want to compete with every day? Who's going to fit in? Who's going to be able to take a back seat and realize, hey, you know what? Steph Curry's a better sh three-point shooter than me. How else can I add value? Anyways, the, the, the reason I say all that is as we look at NCOs, I'm coming to the Ranger Regiment. Uh, these guys are, have a storied tradition of success. They're long tenured. They've done more than I could ever hope to do up until this point. And I get to ask, answer the tough question, how am I going to add value to what they're already doing? Also, in the same vein, you know, the Ranger Regiment, they have high standards. And, uh, you know, they expect a lot out of their officers. They expect a lot in terms of uh, especially your attitude. Uh, so they, they don't have to compete with you. Uh, you know, there is someone else who, who would give his left arm for your opportunity. Uh, so, again, it's like those top 100. Who do we want to compete with? Do we want to compete? Do we want to be in the trenches with this officer? Uh, and then, uh, additionally, with the NCOs, uh, I was worried about bringing enough to the table. And now that I've been here, I realize they'll teach me everything I need to know. Uh, what I need to bring is, is an attitude, learner's mindset. Uh, and then maybe some energy and enthusiasm uh, just to make the days go better. Uh, but in terms of the tactical knowledge and everything, you know, I, I know, Jason, you mentioned the, the brief we did uh, for one of our exercise. And I was saying terms that my NCOs had just fed me the moment before. I, I didn't even fully appreciate what they meant, but they set me up for success. Uh, so th that's been my experience with the NCOs and the Ranger Regiment. Yeah. So what rank are you now? I'm captain. Dude, I mean... The, the amount of it, uh, knowledge, again, Amazing. I, I'd follow you, oh, no. you know, I mean, like, you're... <laughs> they you, follow me and an NCO. <laughs> you, you've got great <laughs> leadership. <laughs> Though, seriously, yeah. you know, give yourself some credit yeah, here. You, you, you're an amazing leader. Yeah. You've got great leadership. You've got, uh, I, I love your stories. Mm -hmm. I could probably sit here another three hours <laughs> and listen to them. <laughs> Um, this, the nuggets of information that you're drop, uh, dropping and the, it, whether it's the story of how it occurred to you or, um, you know, how you've seen it play out or, or whatever the case may be, you know, sharing those is just amazing. I don't know if you've ever planned on writing. I know everybody, a lot of people come on here and talk about writing a book, but if you ever think about doing that and you do it around the way like Coach K did and, you know, and around leadership and how you applied the game or your life's left lessons into that, I'd buy that book in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. totally. I mean, you put that in print, dude, there's just so much good that can come out of that. Um, and so I hope, it, if nothing else, you do consider doing that. If you haven't done it, uh, already started thinking about it, because uh, 
you, there's only so much that you can impart in a in a, um, a you know a small amount of time with the, when you're with your NCOs or when you're with your junior officers and stuff and you're trying to give them that that coaching and that mentoring. Uh, but it's those types of um, platforms or whatever or mm-hmm. platforms like this where you can reach a broader audience and you can actually make a maybe a more impactful. Um, you know, um, send those impactful messages and, and put those fingerprints and stuff like that. Um, take every opportunity you can because you've got a lot to share. Yeah, don't try to. And again, I I got to talk it up to surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah. And I, I, I want to mention this. You, uh, Jason, you know, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Reynolds, uh, he's one of our mortar men. He, he's been a long tenured regiment guy. And he gave me, he told me something that I, uh, during one of our counselings, and he said, uh, he said, sir, and he put down his dip bottle. And he said, hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's when you know he's serious. <laughs> yeah. He, he's, <laughs> Tree he, ranger stuff. He uh, That's so, awesome. <laughs> he's like, uh, sir, I'm like a, I'm like a, have you ever seen a turtle on a fence post? I said, no, I've never seen a turtle on a fence post. He said, well, if you did, you'd probably think that, that turtle didn't get there by himself. Someone had to put him up there. And I'm like, oh my God, that, that's that's me. I'm a turtle on a fence post. <laughs> so that, that's what he said about himself. That's what I, I, I like to steal that from. But I got to give him credit. Yeah. Uh, to say about myself, I do feel like a turtle on a fence post at times. <clears throat> you know, here at the Ranger Regiment, et cetera. I didn't get here by myself. Someone had to put me up there. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm proud to be here, and I'm trying to. Uh, capitalize it while on it while I got the mic here with you or, or while anyone will hear me and you know maybe maybe I will think about uh, a book <laughs> yeah no I think that would be amazing and uh, now that you've mentioned his name you can now patent it and use it however you want because you own it at this point uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show Marshall and sharing your journey so far and we hope to follow your career in the future as things progress and um, wish you nothing but the best and success and I, I do hope that you do consider something like that and uh, um, again, we'd love to have you come back on the show. I, I'm sure I'd like to spend another hour or two with mm-hmm. you and at least talking about some other, you know, leadership nuggets. It seems like you've uh, not only lived the experience, but you have a lot to, to be able to share from just, um, again, the things you've learned. Yeah. So, no, I really appreciate it. I'm honored to be on here and I, I'd be happy to come back. This is fun. Hanging out with good people like you guys is a lot of fun. Well, I, uh, it's been a you know honor uh, in the time you've worked. I've worked around you in my career. You know, it's, been, it's definitely been like a, a highlight of my career to, to to be able to say that I've worked with somebody at your level and um, that <clears throat> that matures you. You know, coming in with the attitude and mindset of you have, and uh, I was super humble that you um, when I asked you to come and do the podcast that you're like, yeah, I'll do that for you first round. I was like, that's awesome. It speaks uh, to your character and. I just can't thank you enough, man. It's been a great time. been a great ride with you. Absolutely. 